so I know it's been a while since I made Elsa's version 1 and this video was supposed to come out if, uh, if I'm not gonna lie two months ago and well for reasons such as my laziness it didn't and well some other issues that I was having with this project anyways point is it's finally out now and I've sorted a lot of the issues and come up with different solutions to to making this project better so before uh, I move forward I'm just gonna quickly go over some of the additions to Elsa's version 2 uh, I think there's some more but I can't remember them right now but uh, the first one is the biggest one uh, recurrent neural networks I'll go over how they actually work uh, specification so ability for creatures to go into uh, group into different species uh, custom map creation, more hyperparameters. Actually, there's before I believe in Elsa's version two there were 25, and now there's 38. So uh, a lot more hyperparameters now. Um, uh, differential brain visualization, specification visualization. I'll, I'll explain those. Vision mutation, heat map, normal brain visual, differential brain visual. Uh, I think this one. Whoops. That one and this one are the exact same, so, whoops, okay, so, uh, deleting creatures, moving creatures, killing species, finding oldest, finding youngest, finding, finding biggest size, and finding, uh, biggest ancestry tree, and I think there's a few more that I just can't remember right now, but these are some of the additions to Elsa's version 2, and obviously the top, well, I guess the top three being the, the most epic, oh, and multi-threading, whoa, how, how did I forget that? That's the biggest one, another big one. Um, and I'll actually show you the difference between Elsa's version one, which had no multi-threading, and Elsa's version two, which does have multi-threading and how, how big of a difference that it actually makes. So this map that you see over here is actually one of the custom maps that I made. Um, and I'm gonna show you guys how you can create your own custom maps um, with paint. So I'm just gonna click the create button really quickly. and. If I just click anywhere, I'm just going to click, uh, do a left click. These are all the options that I talked about uh, in the start of the video. The ability to see the normal brain, just brain of any creature that you click. The ability to see a difference brain, it just takes the difference between the two brain and shows uh, shows which connections belong um, or are equivalent to being in the same species. Uh, you can delete a selected range of creatures. So if I select this range, I just click delete. It deletes them. Um, you can move selected, move. So if I select these guys here, I move them over here. Suppose I feel like moving them. I'm gonna click move. Bam, they're here now. Okay. So if you see like an amazing race of, I don't know, why am I calling the race? The amazing species that can like hunt down other creatures. You can just go. Oh, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna move them over to some passive creatures and see what happens. Okay. Uh, the ability to kill a certain species I'll that will actually look a lot cooler once there's a lot more creatures and I'll show that later uh, the ability to find oldest so let me just really quickly speed this up so now I'm going to show you guys what it means to kill a certain species uh, this button here uh, but first of all I'm gonna click the draw species color so you can see the the bands up here of you know, each different species but now you actually have a visual way of identifying which creature belongs to that species so all these green guys they're in one species all these purple guys are in one species the blue guys are in one species okay uh, cyan one species so when i click a certain creature let's slow this down so i can click maybe these guys they and i'm going to click kill species okay they just got deleted so that's how the deletion process works the creature that you click um kill species on it deletes every single creature that belongs to that species. Next, if you click draw thread color, it just shows a nice visualization of which creature belongs to which thread. Um, basically, there's 160 creatures right now, so 100 there's and there's four threads, so 160 divided by four. Um, that much work is divided up by every single thread. And uh, the threads are basically just doing tasks that can happen in parallel, so such as feed forward for the neural network for the recurrent neural network the setting of um, initial parameters and 
just in general what the, each vision line sees, these operations can happen in parallel. So that's that's the task that is divided up by the threads. So tasks such as eating from tile um, cannot happen in parallel. So they're done um, through just the same old version of running through every single creature and doing the non-concurrent um, tasks. But obviously the main computation process happens with the neural network and which is now multi-threaded. So that's perfect for us. Next, uh, I'm going to show the heat map. Whoa, there's forming quite a lot of big chains now. Uh, the simulation in general is moving quite fast just because I set the delta time to be, I think, quite high. Um, so that it can go through more years really quickly. And I've noticed that it really doesn't affect the physics that much, so might as well set it higher. Um, anyways, so I'm going to draw the heat map now. Ever since my bird flocking video, I've gotten really... I've started liking heat maps a lot more. I think they look kind of cool. Um, so I can, you can change the heat type. This is the incandescent heat type. This is the heated metal heat type. Or it's the other way around. I don't know. One of the two. Um, pretty cool. They're like squarish blobs, basically. Okay, I'm going to turn that off. Um, next. Oh, yeah, I didn't show Find Biggest Ancestry Tree yet, did I? Okay, this is a huge ancestry tree. Uh, a lot of dead creatures, but a lot of them are still alive. That's pretty cool. Uh, there does seem to be a lot more amazing coordinate behavior now. This is what I was trying to achieve with Elsa's version 1. The, like, these giant chains that, that form. But in Elsa's version 1, for whatever reason, they would just stop forming these chains, like, after a little while. But now, I believe it's I believe it's it's due to the recurrent neural network. I'm, like, 100% sure it has to do with the recurrent neural network. That these creatures are able to, like, have such, like, amazingly complex behavior now. Um, I'm actually going to go over what are, how what the difference between... Elsa's 1 and Elsa's 2 neural network right now because I feel like that's kind of important. I'm gonna quickly explain what the difference between a normal neural network versus a LMAN recurrent neural network is. So in Elsa's 1 this was the this was what was normally used a normal multi-layer perceptron. I just colored each layer with a different color so it's easier to understand. Um, but so the black is your input layer and the green is your output layer. And essentially, th that's how a normal feedforward was done. Each neuron was connected to every other neuron in the next layer. Uh, versus a LMAN neural network, a recurrent neural network, where this, it's the same exact process, except um, once each layer computes its um, values, what it actually does is, so once these neurons here compute their value, what they do is they copy that over back here, okay? And similarly, again, in this layer, once these neurons here uh, have their values computed, they copy it back here. So this way, now it really has a little bit of memory. So each um, on each tick, when this layer wants to compute, compute itself, it has to use the values that it computed along with in the previous iteration. Okay? So this is how a normal recurrent neural network works, and this is what, what is implemented in Elsa's version 2. So now you will find, because of the fact that there's this copying process going on in an LMAT neural network, um, that the size of a normal LMAT neural network is far higher than a um, normal uh, neural network. And by size, I mean the number of computations that have to happen for the final output to be re uh, achieved. Uh, so for example, Suppose you have 20 input neurons. Oh, that's a horrible two. Uh, 20 input neurons. You have 20 um, hidden neurons in just one layer and 10 output neurons. The total number of computation here will be 20 times 20 plus 20 times 10, which is 400 plus 200, and that's a total of 600. So a total of 600 computations roughly have to happen for this um, for an output to be achieved for this. Um, neural network. Whereas, suppose you take the same number of inputs and output uh, and hidden neurons for this LMAN neural network, and let's see how 
much greater that is compared to a normal neural network. So 20, 20, 10. But now you have to understand that this 20 is being copied back here, right? So it's actually 40, 20, 10. This 20 stays 20 because uh, we don't copy the output back to the um, the last layer before the output is computed. Um, so we get 40 times 20, which is 800, and 20 times 10, which is 200, for a total of 1,000. So you can see that there's a total of there's more than there's an extra 400 computations needed for this. Um, neural network to be computed in an LMAN neural network and actually the ratio between the uh, number of computations in an LMAN versus a number um, in a normal neural network only keeps only keeps increasing as you uh, add more layers and add more neurons so uh, really to be able to do this more efficiently multi-threading is needed and uh, that's what I've basically done I've implemented multi-threading for ELSA's version 2 uh, now I'm going to talk a little bit about some of these tiles because now there's actually three different types of tiles here. You have your normal food tile. Um, the black is obviously just water. It, if they touch the water, they did die. But these creatures won't die simply because they're amazingly good at avoiding water. Now just look at this: sees water, runs away from water. Perfect. And these um, white areas. Okay. Now. Those, what, those are what I call mutation lands. And they're mutation lands because if any creature goes on it, their brain starts basically mutating and deforming. So that's also, so that's something that they most likely want to avoid. And now I'm going to actually show you, you can actually see this happening. So I'm going to take, I'm going to take, well, I can show you this guy, but I'm going to just copy some of these guys and move them over here. This is a larger surface area, so move selected. I'm just going to slow this down really quickly. Normal brain. Now, I'm just going to speed this up. You should be able to see changes happening to the brain. Can you guys see that? Um, there's a lot of changes happening to the brain, and you should be able to see this. Um, and he's dead. Well, not sure if you guys saw it. This guy, look at it. Look at that. So. These tiles have to be, they have to learn to avoid simply because it's, it's, it's a mutation land. Um, so some of them learn to avoid it, some of them don't, and it's whatever. I just thought that would be a nice addition to have. Another thing that I was thinking about doing with them was simply just making them have so much food on them that, yeah, it's bad for you to be on it because your brain's going to mutate, but on another note, you're going to get a lot of food. But... I uh, decided not to go with that, but I decided not to go with that. It's, it's I just made sure I just made it so that it has no energy on it. Okay, I'm just kidding. That's literally not a time lapse. I'm just sitting here as this gets recorded, so it's not really a time lapse if you think about it. Anyways, now I'm going to move on to showing how to create the map itself. So to create your own custom map, you need to do three things. You need to have a map.png file, um, wherever you have Elsa's version 2.exe stored. And you need a map underscore spawn.png file. And the third thing you need to do is make sure in your hyperparameters, use custom map is set to 1. It would have been previously set to 0, just change it to 1. Uh, and I'll explain the difference between the two. But let's open map.png. Open with paint. Okay. Uh, this block that you see here has to be 100 pixels by 100 pixels. Okay. Um, next, if you want to choose colors, just click up here and set the luminosity to 120. It has to be 120 uh, just because that in, in HSL represents... Um, the highest brightness so not the highest brightness the highest brightness is 240 but it has to be 120 just to set it to 120 so up here now you can actually scroll through all the the hue values from normal HSB okay and that's just you just pick a color so in this case I'm gonna pick I'm gonna pick yellow okay 
I want there to be a yellow color. I'm going to pick this brush and I'm just going to go that. Okay, all right. Okay, that's a little bit crazy. We just undo that. I'm going to make a line. Okay. Maybe I want to add, uh, maybe I want certain areas to have less resources. The way to do that is just simply move this up to uh, increase the luminosity. Okay, as luminosity increases, the amount of resources on the tile decreases. Okay, that's how that will work. So I'm going to zoom in. Oh, it's maximally zoomed in. I'm going to pick this and I'm going to just add, I want these areas to have not a lot of food on them. Okay. And simply just click save. Okay. Once you're, once, once you're done making your map, once you're done making whatever areas you want, just click save. So now this is saved. I'm just going to copy it. So, cause I want to paste it into my spawn.png and I'm going to open map underscore spawn.png. Whoops. I opened it in thing. I'm going to open it in paint. Open with paint. And I'm going to paste it here. Okay. So map, uh, you, now you're probably thinking, well, the, the map underscore spawn.png and map under, map.png are the exact same. But suppose you want to restrict certain areas from being uh, from spawning creatures, right? Just make those areas black. If they're water, no creatures will spawn on it. Okay. So I'm going to pick this tool here. And suppose I just I don't want any creatures spawning on this area at all, like this entire area. The only area where I want creatures to spawn is this area here. So I could just remove that area. And click save. Now only this area will spawn creatures. Does that make sense? And I can actually show you show this. I click close, open Elsus. Uh, I'll set it in window mode. Windowed. Play. Now, if I click create, only this area here should be spawning creatures. Okay, perfect. Now you can see that a new addition that we added is up here. And that's how you restrict spawning zones. And that's also how you create um, custom maps. The best way to learn it is just to mess around with it. Now I'm going to talk about all the stuff in the in the world hyperparameter file and I commented all of it so uh, it'll be a little bit easier to understand. Like last time I think in Elsa's version when I didn't have anything commented. I didn't even explain most of it um, which is kind of stupid of me. Um, I'm just going to leave this running in the background. I think we'll, we'll see where it gets to. It's at, it's at 400 years now and in general a lot of these creatures are very intelligent now. Um, it's going to be kind of interesting to see, you know, to what level they can evolve. Um, so let's talk about this. So what, let's talk about this now. Um, first, obviously, the neural layer. It's the exact same as else one. You can describe how the hidden layer and the number of neurons should look like. Okay. Um, 20 is the first hidden layer, and then 11, then 11. You can just set it to whatever you want. Um, uh, another thing, you have to have the space between everything, okay? Uh, you see like this little space? If you don't add that space, then it's not going to be read properly, and it's most likely going to crash. Your program is most likely going to crash when you try to load it. Uh, minimum count, the minimum amount of creatures will spawn. Max visual speed. Uh, speed after which the rendering process is stopped. Climate. Um... The rate at which it spawns, 1 is super low and 10 is super high. Minimum life, the minimum number of years the creature could live if everything was perfect, you know, in its world. But everything is not perfect, so it depends on other variables too. Um, life decrease, the rate at which it decreases life uh, for the creature, which is based on how much energy it has. So the higher the energy, the lower the life decreases. And I actually added formulas for a lot of these, so if you're interested in those, that kind of thing. You could go over this formula and understand what it means. Eat damage. The damage it takes based on the difference between its mouth color and the tile color. Velocity damage, angular damage, the damage it takes while it's moving. Fight damage, the amount of damage it can inflict onto other creatures at any given time. Um, nutrition. Uh, these two are the two new additions that I made. To make the sort of eating process a little bit more realistic, 
um, you can kind of see the reason why these creatures are so interested in moving away rather than just spinning in circles. Elsus 1 had this issue where the creatures would just spin in circles. They would never move around. And to solve this problem, um, I added these two. Uh, it was actually one of the comments somebody said um, in Elsus version 1 where... Uh, uh, the tile shouldn't be giving so much energy as the food on it depletes, right? So, uh, and by energy, I think they meant nutrition. And so this is what I added. As the energy on, so as the food on that tile decreases, the amount of nutrition, nutritional value um, also decreases. So, the, form, the formulas here, just like look over that, it probably make a lot more sense. Minimum energy to give birth, so the creature must have two energy to give birth. Uh, minimum fight maturity, so creature must have lived for a quarter of a year of its life to 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 be able to inflict damage to other creatures. Um, birth energy cost um, is it's the energy a, a creature will give up 1.5 of its energy to give birth. You know how generous. Uh, birth life cost it will give up 2.0.25, and life is very important. Um, it's the thing that always keeps decreasing and only goes up if you attack other creatures, so um, Quite important to have a lot of life uh, fight energy cost um, The amount of energy it will spend just having that red line out So that red line is actually costing it energy to have out um, Some of these creatures don't have red line or have short mount like this creature here They're able to move their red line back if they see another creature uh, if they see someone from their own species, so they can conserve energy. Basically, they only take it out if they're if they see another creature. Oh my God, these lines are ridiculously these chains. I mean, they're ridiculously in high numbers. I've honestly never seen like these many chains before. This is 608 years. Okay, uh, moving on. Initial vision angles. Okay, let me just quickly talk about vision. So if I click vision. Look at that. Their vision is completely different from when it first started, right? Why is that? The vision actually mutates over time. So the neural network actually has to learn to mutate alongside these vision lines. So you'll see many of these creatures will have, um, if I slow down, well, okay, definitely not these guys, but... Okay, I don't have a good example, but uh, what I'm actually trying to say is some of these guys will actually mutate, well, will get to a point where the vision lines mutate, where one of the vision lines is actually directly aligned with the fighting line. So the second they see a creature, and if they bring out their fighting line, they'll, they 100% know that they're going to hit the other creature. So that's a pretty good uh, mutation to have. But suppose you already want the creatures to spawn with the uh, angles, then you can uh, set that with initial vision angles. Okay, let me increase the speed now. Vision. Okay, so that's what initial vision angles. The first is the initial angle, and then the offset to that, and the offset to that, and then the offset to that. And it just keeps adding the offsets. Creature size. Um, in Elsa's version 1, I believe if it was 0.1. Oh, 0 0.15 or something uh, increase the size so now they have a the creatures have a little bit of a higher hit detection area uh, but you can custom change this now to whatever number you want so world delta time um, just the time step I recommend it was 0 0.002 for Elsa's one but now I recommend 0 0.003 but I have it set to 0 0.004 because I'm a rebel and I don't do what I say Okay, anyways, that's that a bad joke. Uh, mutation number. Uh, another thing, these add symbols mean absolutely nothing anymore. So don't even, don't. I, I, I think I said that they're important, but they're, it, does, it doesn't matter. Um, mutation number. Uh, this is kind of important. I just keep it at 1,000, okay? Um, a mutation weak factor. It's just the, the chance. So whatever this number is, it's 1. So 1 over 1,000 is the chance for each known connection to mutate from the weaker parent. Because the stronger parent, the, the creature perfectly copies the stronger parent, but the weaker parent has this much chance, 1 over 1,000 chance for each of its neural connection to co be copied over. Uh, mutation sign. Um, so mutation sign, 
mutation random and mutation increase and mutation decrease. These I already explained in Elsa's version one video. So if you want to go go watch that video, uh, soil fracture just it makes it uh, more watery or just little giant land masses. Keep it between 0 0.1 and 10 and try it out. You'll see what happens. Soil color it makes tighter grouping of colors. Uh, displacement these are just they, it just moves it around. It doesn't uh, if if I set if you set all this to zero it wouldn't even mean anything. Uh, s uh, seed soil power it just adds more redness to the soil. I was having an issue where basically some of the tiles for whatever apparent reason were not red like they were they had a lot of less red than normal so I added this parameter. Uh, displacement fertility to you can move the fertility around. Uh, soil displacement so, sorry soil fertility. Uh, I have no idea what this does or why I added it. Okay, um, did I write that really? Um, I must have really no idea what it does. So, uh, seed soil ground. So this is actually what adds the fertility to it. So keep it between zero point uh, zero and one. So zero means um, very a, a very high fertility, and one means very low fertility. Use custom map. We just went over that. Now the important bit: species similarity score. Okay, that is. This is basically the average difference between two neural networks. If it's the average difference between two neural networks, the weight of those neural networks is less than this number, then they belong to the same species. That's essentially what this number represents. Uh, 0 0.75 is a pretty good number. Um, 0 0.0075 is a pretty good number. Species grouping algorithm. So there's uh, two different algorithms, technically three, but I'm just, I just I wrote just grouped them too. Um, uh, there's zero and anything between zero and one and one okay zero is a random check it's the fastest but it's the it's the least um how do i put this it's the worst out of all of them okay zero a uh, random check basically means you only check once per species randomly if it matches then you put that creature into that species if it doesn't match then then move on to the next species and if it doesn't match anything then that creature is now a new species okay it's the fastest, but it can get it can be wrong certain times, right? Um, uh, one basically means one hundred percent match. Um, each creature must match one hundred percent of the creatures in another species. Um, so this makes sure that each band that you see here, every single creature in that species, is one hundred percent, you know, similar, uh, similar in 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 the ways that. They are all, if you were to do a check for all of them, they would all be below this number, okay? And anything in between 0 and 1 is just a percentage. Um, <clears throat> it just makes sure that at least that percent of a certain species match, okay? And number of threats. Uh, keeping 4 is highly recommended. So yeah, just keep it 4, but you could mostly just keep it under 10 because context switching for threads can actually take up a lot of time as the number of threads increases. Um, which won't be good, which actually slows down. I'm going to actually change the number of threads to 1. Now let's see how slow it is, or how fast it is. Well, we won't know until we try, right? Um, I'm going to click play. Now it'll load. It'll, now all the creatures will be set to just one thread, right? So now if I click load. Uh, the color, uh, species color changes, but the, it's the, the grouping is still perfectly the same. So if I click uh, draw species color, now I'm going to click speed this up to 8. Okay, I can't really tell right now. Interesting, I thought I would be able to. It's not as profound, but I can definitely tell you it feels a little bit less smoother. Um, it would have been a lot more profound had there been more creatures. So I'm just gonna I'm gonna copy these guys here and watch them increase size. Yeah, it's very choppy now. 300 creatures, very choppy. Okay, I'm gonna click save to this. It's very choppy. Okay, let's compare that to what what would happen if we change this to four. I hope I'm right, because <laughs> uh, I, I, I know there is a significant difference between the two, but I don't know why it's not 
being so, it's not so profound. Maybe 100 creatures is kind of low for it to be visible. Okay, four threads, 16 speed. Copy some of these guys here. Get a lot more creatures. Move selected. 200 creatures. Yeah, it's 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 way better. It's way better compared to I had there uh, with just compared to one thread. This is definitely much better. Okay, well that proved it at least, thankfully. I was getting really scared for a second. Why I didn't write the the name for each of these? Like what is what does this represent? Like what does this neuron output neuron represent? What does this output neuron represent? That's simply because there's no space. There's literally no space here. Um, I don't know how to make this any visually more any more pleasing than this. So. I'm just going to stick with this and I'm going to write it down in another text file so you guys can look at what the outputs and inputs are or in the description of the video. So this is another um, uh, map that I created. Uh, they can only spawn uh, in, in general areas to these little pillars over here and I guess it's, it's going to be kind of hard for them to be able to survive this environment. Let me uh, select draw species. Brown, pink guys. They are perfect for this environment. Actually, this is exactly what I meant. Let me slow down. See this guy's his one of his vision lines is almost aligned perfectly with his um, fighting line. So the second this sensor hits another creature, it it immediately he, this creature will immediately know that if he was to. Um, bring out the fighting line it would hit the other creature so that's what that adaption can do and i've noticed uh, through a lot of simulations many this this adaption evolves quite frequently which is pretty cool so this is a little maze that i created and trust me, it's a maze. It doesn't look like a maze, but I copied it from a maze online. <laughs> um, these black areas are basically the areas, like the walls in a maze. And then the red areas are the path that it's supposed to follow. And eventually, the creatures, I want them to be able to solve this maze and get to this green spot. And I, I think that they should be able to do it. However, I'm not sure how how many years it might take for these guys to eventually solve this maze but if I had to guess it really shouldn't take that much time it's just a matter of time okay well they're almost have this maze solved uh, and I'm not joking it's a literal maze that I copied from online it doesn't look like it but it is a maze a circular maze that's what it's that's what the thing said 300 creatures 16 times speed, look at this, it's so smooth. Makes the multi threading makes a huge difference, too. Come on, guys, solve the maze already. Well, this maze is solved, that's pretty cool. It only took 130 years. Let's see, it's the green guys that solved it primarily. All right, green, they were probably a different color when they were around here but they slowly mutated you know as they traveled uh, I think we should be able to see that actually green 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 starting to get a different color now bluish yeah it's different species they slowly evolved over time as they were solving the maze which is kinda cool eventually the other species will come here too as these guys die out I'll have a um, some maps over here. Uh, it's a some maps folder. It's just some maps, literally. Um, some map maze. There's some path. Uh, I didn't show this one, but you guys can try it out yourself. Um, there's some map square. I showed this already. Um, what is it? Wheel broken. Showed that. And it's the perfect wheel that doesn't have the mutation lens on it. Um, so, once again, I think I already mentioned it, but if you copy a certain area and you paste it, 
Um, I delete these. Make sure you remove this um, parts from it. Just it just it has to be map.png and map underscore spawn.png. Okay. Uh, otherwise, it won't be able to read the file. The download to this project is going to be in the description. You can download either a zip or a RAR file and extract it with whatever software you have to extract uh, compressed files. Um, uh, the code release I'm not going to do just yet simply because the code looks extremely ugly. Um, it's not commented at all and it's a complete mess at this point. I just want to comment everything and I'm definitely just going to put it up on a GitHub after this, uh, after that's done. And I'm, there, there are so many topics that I've missed that I wanted to talk about um, that I just don't have the time to do right now just because this video is ridiculously long at this point. Um, I'm probably going to make a second follow-up video where I'm going to discuss some of the other little things that I might have missed in this video. Um, but that's pretty much it. I think I've covered all the main things. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, if you have literally any questions, just leave it in the comments. Um, I answer like all of them. This is really smooth, guys. It's not a joke. Like I know I've been saying this entire video that um, this is smooth, but this is okay. Well, this is kind of choppy, but you get my point. Overall, it's pretty smooth. It's all thanks to multi-threading. I like how the species colors are differentiated here. I don't know. Do they? I don't know if they kind of evolved the idea to stick near their own species um, rather than in enemy territory. Because sometimes they evolve the ability to just travel into enemy territory and then they die. Sometimes they just sort of stick around to each other and their population grows. So that's that's where I'm going, going off of. Oh, another thing that I just like doing is if I see creatures moving backwards, I don't like that. So I'm just going to kill the species that does it. Selective breeding, basically. Kind of evil, but you know, in this case, it has to be done if you want to have a more visually pleasing thing to watch. That's pretty much it for now. Um, thank you for watching, and uh, have a great day.